will come back to Estonia. Lina Yanes from the Ministry of uh, Culture will speak about money. What kind of support is there uh, for uh, old towns? Thank you very much, dear participants, and maybe if Oslo is still listening to us, then greetings to Oslo, to Noel Osa and Wigner. It was very nice to see you. I choose to uh, stay optimistic that we will meet in person also uh, before this program is uh, finished. Uh, Estonia Norwegian cooperation in the field of uh, cultural heritage has uh, last four years, uh, we can say for decades. So we have restored and uh, developed uh, the manor schools. We have uh, connected Estonian and Norwegian local governments. We have exchanged heritage experts and knowledge. And uh, once there was a possibility that uh, there is a a new uh, uh, measure period coming up, but then the both parties wanted to continue this cooperation. So I'm going to describe why we chose city centers, why is it important for Estonia and Norway. And the second half of my presentation, I'm going to um, also introduce uh, these buildings, which has, uh, have re uh, received subsidies and why they're already working. So as mentioned, uh, this already uh, uh, we have had quite few grants. Uh, this is now the third. And uh, we are falling under the regional field with the other ministries. And uh, our part of it is uh, is the heritage uh, areas in the historic uh, city centers. There are two parts. There is calls for uh, uh, for uh, participate, and uh, then there is the other part under which we have the conference here today. So what was the basis? So. Um, we have a lot of fields we can cover in the heritage production. We have one third of the constructed material in a bad technical condition. One fourth of the protected heritage sites uh, buildings have not, are not in use. And out of 11 heritage areas have a shrinking populations. So we have a lot of choice to make for our investments. And when we started to uh, develop this program since 2016, then we knew that it was going to have a, a smaller budget than we had for manor schools. So the question was that where we should really aim this uh, scarce resource we have, what is our joint interest in Norway, and how we can squeeze water out of stone. So how we can we can achieve uh, we can uh, then link heritage with other fields and forget wider impact in the society. So we have uh, valuable buildings which are um, empty or uh, unlivable, but we have uh, more of them outside the centres. We have two biggest centres really. Everywhere else, we see sinking popula populations. The same is true for Norway outside bigger cities. So in Estonia, many small towns, the uh, population has uh, shrunk between two uh, censuses, 15 to 20 percent. So this in turn has an impact on cultural heritage. So if the businesses and services disappear, buildings will remain empty and the city centers are on the use, then uh, it is uh, unavoidable that the culturally valuable buildings will remain empty and it is the, in the city center, the heritage areas which have a lot of empty buildings. 
So the decision was made that this, uh, these subsidies will go to the uh, small city centers where we have our uh, uh, natural protection of the uh, city centers. These are the uh, heritage uh, protected areas where we have a problem with shrinking population and we have a lot of empty buildings. Uh, where we have had uh, and previously no other direct subsidies. So when it comes to a uh, problem related to shrinking uh, or deteriorating populations, there are no uh, simple solutions. It uh, takes a lot of different activities, but the improvement of quality is one of them. Oh, the city spatial area. So it means that these areas uh, it will be good to uh, forward this resource to the city centers. So to offer public services so that people will come back into old towns so that the old towns will be more uh, vibrant and would not lose uh, the attractiveness in comparison to big shopping centers. There is also valuable um, architecture. So if we uh, fix the buildings in the city center, then it's for cultural heritage is a win-win situation. So if you talk about the urban environment and in the city center, then uh, this building has a bigger impact on the surrounding areas compared to a lone standing building. If you have, if you fix up a building which has a lot of spatial impact, uh, that means that there will be new users coming into the old town. And it has a wider impact on the uh, city uh, space. So this is a, a trigger. So this building will, can uh, carry many roles. So that means that the uh, the city center is improved, uh, 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 both the looks and functions, and it has an impact on the neighboring buildings so that people want to fix up the neighboring buildings as well. So this is an optimism. And this can have an impact on the city uh, or the uh, real estate prices, uh, increased tourism value. and might also increase the uh, activeness of a local population, which would help them to make decisions, for example, not to move away. Now coming to the uh, calls for proposals, although we, uh, we uh, uh, reduced it to 10 uh, cities and uh, the uh, heritage sites in these uh, cities and towns, then this uh, interest to put uh, empty buildings into use was uh, quite extensive. So uh, there was a lot of interest and it could have supported a lot more towns. The seven buildings which received support So I'll tell you a little bit more. One, how building is seasonally used. Two are have some seasonal use, and one is um, had uh, car mechanics in it. So the uh, the activity in the building did not have to be heritage related. Uh, so what is a sustainable use in a small town, old town? Uh, do they have uh, economically viable solutions for these buildings? So what kind of public use would uh, bring most people to the old town? So everybody who su submitted their proposal uh, had to forecast the number of users. And uh, this function was not limited. We had only excluded uh, residential uh, uh, premises. So let's look at the buildings. So this is uh, Lihula Manor House, and the, uh, this is the vodka shed you saw as well. So this is part of the Manor House uh, ensemble, all this, the building is in a bad condition. Uh, but uh, the entire building and details, uh, the uh, pillars, and uh, they're all very nicely visible. So this is going to have a Heritage Foundation Information Center and the uh, Handicraft uh, Chamber for the com uh, community. So there was a smith a smithy in the building uh, before uh, the 30s, so it's going to restore that. So talking about the Heritage Fund, uh, Information Center, then we have very few of them in Estonia, not enough. So we have the uh, Sustainable Renovation Information Centers, which are uh, more active in Tallinn and Tartu. 
So the one in Baida did not ha have not had their own home yet, uh, but I'm going to talk about them a little bit more. So I'm very happy that this building received support. And this is the center where the people and the owners of the building uh, can uh, get information how to uh, also look after your building so you don't you do not end up in restoration so closer it is to people then the better it is so a few more pictures then this is volga so uh, the city of volga is a wooden building uh, it's been empty for 20 years but it is in a very visible place. It's uh, right next to the central square of Volga. The constructions uh, have uh, been uh, have survived quite well. It is quite strong bones, and this is the oldest wooden building in Volga. So the typical 18th century uh, Baltic German uh, uh, city uh, dwellers uh, house, which uh, we do not have many in South Estonia. It was in a quite a sad, sad state. And uh, people were calling for uh, dismantling, but now it's part of this uh, program. And the uh, good thing is, for this project, is right in the city centre. And I would also would have to tell you that one of the sources of inspiration of the program, uh, the, when we started working on this um, idea, was the Good Public Space uh, program by the uh, Association of Architects, which looks at the city squares. And we decided that in our program, we prefer these buildings, which are right at the city center next to the square, because uh, if you put more resources in the same places, then presumably uh, we can amplify the impact of both programs. And in Volga, it, was, uh, it worked out well. So it wants to renovate this building, then it's at the city center. And it has a very big uh, visual and uh, functional impact. So the city of Volga, who is uh, leading this project, is planning to have uh, two rental spaces on the ground floor. So they want to rent them out as businesses. And the second floor is going to be a community room. So the meetings, seminars, uh, exhibitions, uh, trainings, and so forth because there are not many public services uh, next to this uh, uh, square, so this is going to be it. A few pictures from inside as well. So Lihola and Volga projects are led by local governments. So all the other projects are uh, led by uh, private uh, applicants. So uh, all the cities which have participated, Volga and Lihola, have lost the most of population and therefore it is very hard to find private investors. So in a way it's inevitable so that the local government will have to take over this project and it's a very good example at the other hand how the local government is taking the lead role in the project and is contributing to the, towards the city centre and is also convinced that this is something which is uh, worthy of contributing and the city centre is worthy a uh, place to live. Then uh, Kurasara, uh, the warehouse at the harbor. So there are two projects uh, which uh, are supported uh, in Kurasara, so Tolli Street 4 and the uh, warehouse. So they are quite close to each other and the important places uh, because they are quite close to the uh, Kurasara Castle and between the Kurasara Castle and the main street. So they're both uh, one of the oldest uh, civil buildings in the city, and they're both, both empty quite a long, quite a long time. And in the warehouse, two thirds of it will be uh, concerts and theatre rooms, and restaurant uh, accommodation, and some other uh, business areas. And the other building is totally four, one of the oldest buildings in Kurasara. So you can see it's a wealthy citizen's dwelling, uh, looking at the shape of it. Outside, it actually doesn't look all that bad. To the so a few pictures from inside. And the concept here was different compared to the others, if you think of the function of it. Because the idea is that after the restoration, 
there is going to be health promotion center in Kurasara, uh, which is a kind of seasonal, uh, can offer services outside uh, the season as well. So this is extra um, holiday uh, and um, vacation possibility outside the climate because this applicant has a very strong community support. So this project has very good preconditions to uh, to be successful and to financially uh, also viable. Baida, this is the Sustainable Development Center. So. Uh, this is a small town, very visible place. So this is going to host the uh, Sustainable Renovation Information Center, where they're going to offer information to the owners of buildings, uh, skills, organize trainings, and also sell uh, secondhand materials, reusable materials. So this is going to be sort of a good uh, sample uh, uh, which would inspire other owners of buildings to uh, renovate their houses. So this is Boru. So this is uh, from the Tsarist area until the 30s. It had the uh, uh, guest house and a police station. And then it's going to be a guest house, a remote working center guest, uh, and a cafe. So these functions are mutually completing. And uh, so there are interesting functions, and you can see how uh, uh, different functions are being suggested for small towns, old towns. So because this, uh, the measure which is being uh, offered can only cover the initial biggest investment need. So these are the uh, uh, buildings which have been. Uh, empty for a while, of course, is quite sensible, but then after that, you have to cope yourself. So one hand from the was a, a restoration, and there was support uh, at the other hand uh, to uh, uh, start up of different activities in these buildings. So the business plan, of course, uh, added uh, good points because uh, it means that uh, these houses which have been renovated for public money uh, will be uh, uh, put into good use also in the future. So this is uh, the view from inside, Varu. And the last is uh, Hapsalo. This is the Evaldokas uh, Museum. It's going to be uh, around the year art center. Uh, so this building has been only in seasonal use so far. And this is one of the beneficiaries who will continue with the current function. But since they're going to be uh, all year round use, then in a resort town, it has an, uh, as much of an impact than uh, putting an empty house into good use in some other town. So there's going to be a permanent exhibition. Uh, so use uh, art um, studies, art uh, uh, history library. And uh, heating and ventilation has been missing, which are important for a museum. Uh, so these are the first things which will be uh, established there and will be done. Ground floor, there is a museum and gallery with exhibitions, and then permanent exhibitions on the second floor, and also professional library. And this project will be finished by 2023 spring. Well, we have the deadline of other projects as well. And this is going to be 20 uh, years uh, from the initial opening of the museum. And the uh, granddaughter of the artist uh, is also in the room here now. And uh, this uh, shows us very well how uh, protected buildings and his valuable historical buildings can be uh, put into use in the new functions. So this is one of these uh, myths uh, when it comes to um, uh, Heritage Foundation, that the historical foundation has to be used as were, but uh, adaptability is a good uh, sign because no house is being built for only one generation. 
because they do cha uh, get changed as things change, as uh, possibilities change. So this uh, Eval Dokas Museum has uh, gone through many transformations and the history goes back to the mid 19th century. And it illustrates very nicely uh, the, how the use has been changed because it's used, it was a tavern, then it was became a guest house and before it became a museum, uh, there was a children's art school. So our uh, previous uh, subsidies from Norway uh, shows how the things and buildings change because uh, we had manor schools which used to be residential buildings and only after the land reform they were used as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, schools and other such buildings. And finally, in 2015, um, a big um, study, all European study, on the impact of cultural heritage. And it investigated what was the impact. Not only a cultural, it has a social, economic, and environmental impact. Right now, we are in uh, the regional area. But actually, environment can be part of the uh, the, the heritage program could be part of the environmental programs, economic programs. There is a social impact. And all in all, and this um, period of Norwegian um, investments uh, came at the best of times. As a result of these programs, people started de rediscovering the attraction of small towns. And riding the wave of the green uh, turn, it is important to realize that reuse and renovation of old buildings is a big part of uh, sustainable living. I'm not sure people really understand that uh, in Estonia, the desire of building a zero energy house is so big. But in Norway, there are many studies like that that have been carried out. And it's quite interesting how existing houses and the renovation of those is more sustainable, ha leaving a smaller footprint than building new one, uh, new buildings. There is definitely room for debate here. And finally, this round of applications allowed us to practice the strategic trend of heritage protection, finding new ways of usage for older buildings because the best way of preserving um, heritage is to use it. Thank you. Thank you so much.